Hey, good afternoon and um, welcome to my talk on why I'm starting an online band program. Uh, my name is... Oh, clicker's not working. My name is Mahat Hussain and um, I'm a freelance Salesforce architect from the UK. If you want to reach me on Twitter, you can hit me up on the handle Mahat Hussain. Just before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping things. Clickers busted. So firstly, the developer keynote is on Thursday. The guys just mentioned it, but definitely go check that out. It's going to be awesome. Um, and then our favorite slide, uh, the safe harbor statements. Key message here is that make all purchasing decisions based on uh, the currently available products. With the, with the housekeeping stuff out of the way, I wanted to talk about Today I'm going to talk about what BAM is, talk about my story. Um, to understand why I'm doing this, you kind of really need to know about my background. Talk about some of the frustrations I feel um, with, that I have within the industry and you guys probably could relate to. And then I talk about finding your BAM moment, finding that moment where it all kind of clicks and you take action and you try and make something positive happen. Um, I was very impulsive. I started straight away. I struck while the iron, you know, while the passion was still kind of there. And then I'll talk about the Bring Me In program that I started three months in. We'll talk about how what's going well, what's not going so well, and see how, how that is. So, what is BAM? BAM stands for Be a Multiplier. And to be perfectly honest, for me, it started off as just another trail hedge badge. But it really got me thinking about what, what impact I could have within my community. It's all about um, le doing a learning event for your community or within your company. And it has all the resources you need. So with that, it really got me thinking, actually, what, you know, I've got the resources. What can I do with those resources? How can I be impactful within my community? Definitely go check it out. Um, go check out the Trail Hedge Badge. So that's BAM. Um, my story. So when you do something like this, it really matters where you, your background will really drive you. For me, I was born in Somalia, not the safest country in the world. Um, for once, I'd love to see a movie that didn't involve AK-47s or hostages. But in the meantime, I'd, I take solace from the fact that, you know, it is a beautiful country, despite what you see in the, in the movies. It's got the longest coastline in the whole of Africa, and it's absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, it's still, you know, reeling from the effects of over 20 years of civil war. And before the civil war got started, my mother took the really tough decision to move me and my whole family to the UK. So I've been living in the UK since 1991. Um, my mother, she initially, the intention was to migrate and um, be gone for only like three months. The situation in Somalia spiraled out of control. There was, you know, she migrated with five boys, me being one of them, um, and my father, who's quite ill. My mother had a tough decision to make. I can't, she couldn't take everybody. So she was thinking to actually leave me behind. Thankfully, my auntie intervened and kind of stepped in and took action. She said, you know, you have to take my hat. Unfortunately, my younger brother did get left behind, but he's, he's joined us recently. Um, so yeah, I almost didn't make it without my auntie taking action and really stepping in. Who knows what could have happened. Then, for, you know, I, I went to university. Um, I didn't go straight away. I went when I was 22. I studied communications engineering, but I did all sorts of jobs. I've worked in, you know, doing removals, worked as stewards. I've been event staff in these kind of events before in London. And all of that made me, made me come across people from different walks of life. And I was really able to connect to that, and I really enjoyed that. I look back on that time with fondness. But in the end, my, my uncle convinced me to go study uni to go to university where I studied communications engineering. And now, you know, I've been in the Salesforce game for about eight years. 
Um, I'm a freelance Salesforce architect with uh, 11 certifications. Also, I'm football mad. So if you know anything about the UK, we love our football. It's not called soccer over there. Um, this gentleman on the screen is Mohammed Salah. Just like me, he's Muslim. And he's done something amazing for the Muslim community in the UK. He's actually managed to shift the needle from all the negative talk that we kind of associate with Muslims and whatnot to something much more positive. He's, you know, he's, he's really shifted the needle. People see Muslims in a more positive light through the actions that he's taken. And he's an inspiration for many of us. Not only because he plays for a great team, but yeah, because he does great stuff as well. So what are my frustrations? You know, you, you guys may be able to relate to some of these frustrations. For me, diversity is something that drives me up the wall. It's something that I struggle to deal with and kind of live with. So growing up in London, really, really multicultural part of London, East London. However, I get into work and it's not the same. Everybody kind of looks the same, but they don't really look like me, which was a bit of a hard thing to deal with. And, you know, when I did find somebody that looked like me, I was like, whoa, hey, what you doing here? And it's, I'm doing the same thing you're doing here, bro. I'm working too. Um, then there's, then there's kind of the constant requests from, from family to kind of bring them in. So my friends and family would ask me about what I do. I tell them about Salesforce, their eyes light up. And then I'd send them away and I'd say, go and learn Salesforce, go do this, go do that. But then, you know, that original enthusiasm would die because they didn't really have the context. You know, Trailhead has been absolutely amazing, but if you're coming from a world where you don't know what CRM is, you don't know what business applications are, it's, hard, it's quite hard to kind of get that context. So they'd come back to me and they'd say, I'd say, hey, you know, how, how are you finding it with Salesforce? And that, that sparkle in their eye wouldn't be there anymore, which, I, which kind of frustrated me a little bit. Then we have what the guys in the US are doing. So this is not really a frustration, but more of an observation. We all saw what Pep Up Tech are doing in the keynote yesterday. Such an amazing organization. We know what Silver CRM is doing. You know, that's a one consulting company in the US that I'm aware of that's partnered with Pep Up Tech. We've got Leah McGowan here. And then we've got Ilhan Omar, who's the first elected um, American Somali legislator. If you can tell me what the Salesforce connection is, there may be a prize. I don't know. I don't really have anything. <laughs> we got something. Oh. And then, what is your bad moment? For me, you know, your bad moment is something that I describe when everything kind of clicks, it kind of all comes together. For me, I, I took some of the frustrations and the inspirations that I talked about, and then the tools, the resources through the trailhead badge, and you know, inspiration from people like Leah, from Pep Up Tech, from all those guys. And then conversations with my family. So my, my wife, she trained as a civil engineer. She went into work, very male-dominated environment as it is. And she's black and she's Muslim. So she find it really difficult to kind of enjoy her profession. So she retrained as a physics teacher. She absolutely loves it now. But we've got two young kids. We've got a young girl, we've got a young boy, and we sit there, we think about, like all, other, all parents do, we think about what kind of world, what kind of workplace are they going into, and that was it. That was, for me, that was my bad moment. That was when it all came together, and I was like, right, I've got everything I need, I've got the inspiration, now it's time to take action. And that's what I did. I took action. And you know, if you're gonna start something like this, you need to take action, you need to be impulsive, you need to, be, you need to strike while the iron is hot. So I got out there, I didn't, I didn't let that initial fire kind of dwindle, got out there, posted something on LinkedIn and Medium, 
started getting registrants, and I went to the channels where the, where the people I'm trying to reach are. So I went to WhatsApp. I didn't really use, I used LinkedIn, but you know, the positive vibes start to roll in when you do something like this. And that drives you on, that really drives you on. So where are we now? So I put together the Bring Me In program. It's an online training program that I started. What is it? We, we focus on helping get people get started in Salesforce. We provide advice to new Salesforce newbies. So if you can imagine, if you're, you know, like a lot of people getting started in Salesforce, your company just gets Salesforce, and you're given the role of being a Salesforce admin. But you don't know where to go. You don't know who, you don't, you don't know where to re who to reach out to, and we provide that. We provide help for Salesforce newbies and people trying to get started in the Salesforce community. We focus on context. So like I mentioned, you know, people would ask me about Salesforce, how do I get started? I'd send them off, but they didn't really have the context. So that's what we try to do. And we go a little bit, try and go a little bit beyond Trailhead. You know, tra Trailhead is amazing, but without that context, it can be hard for people to kind of really dive in. So quick um, progress update. We're about three months in. There's some things that are working really well. You know, we've got a Slack community with strong engagement. We, we, we've got a trailhead tracker where we do some kind of gamification. And the group sessions, they provide really good context as well. You know, just yesterday, this gentleman in the top right-hand corner, Abdul, he's got a job in Salesforce, working in Salesforce now. He works for a company called Light, Lightful CRM. He's cross-trained from being a web developer to a Salesforce developer now. And to get that news just before the kind of whole Dreamforce was really kicking off was absolutely amazing. Um, you know, this is new. So to be honest, what's not working so well? And if you're going to start something like this, from my experience, scheduling and bandwidth can be quite challenging. So we initially said we're going to run the sessions every other Saturday. It's quite restrictive. So what we're doing instead is going to a model where we provide one-to-one -one sessions. And that's available every Saturday and every Sunday. People can join all year round because, you know, you don't, once that initial interest is there, to turn somebody away and say, oh, the program is closed, come back in three months' time, it's not really going to work. They're going to, they're going to, that interest is going to, uh, fade. And then um, the group sessions, they were kind of, it's quite difficult to cater for the wide range of abilities. So what we said is we do more one-to-one -one sessions and the group sessions we run once a month and we get some guest speakers involved. You know, all of that has been great. Um, when you do something like this, you know, there are, there's obviously that feeling of selflessly helping others, which is amazing. Um, you know, this is just one example. Francis Pindar, who's an MVP from the UK, unfortunately couldn't join us because he's, he's just had a baby boy. Congratulations, Francis. Um, but he's, he's got a Udemy course. And I told him about what we're doing, and he said, Maha, you know, here's a, here's a voucher code for all your students. And that's just an example of how amazing the Salesforce Sahana is and how people once you get the message out there about what you're doing, how people are willing to help. Then what was actually quite surprising to me was some of the self-improvement for myself that I found, like persuasion, motivation skills, presentation skills, and Salesforce skills, right? So being asked a question about Salesforce from a total newbie, that's going to really test you because you're going to have to be able to explain that really well for that person to understand. So those are some of the, you know, um, unexpected benefits. Key takeaways, if you want to do something like this, you know, firstly, go check out the Salesforce community groups, the existing ones. That will give you a good starting point. And if you feel there's a gap, then take action. Go be a multiplier. Uh, <laughs> thank you, guys. So just one last before we kind of wrap up for questions and stuff, there's another session on Thursday with myself, Leah, uh, Crystal, and Scott. And you can kind of come along, 
talk to us about what it's like to start a community event where and um, yeah that's on Thursday Moscone West come check that out and um, thank you if you have any questions I'll be just over here or you can take them now how do I do the one-on-ones the, the, the question is, how do I do the one-on-ones? So there's a couple of things. Um, for scheduling, I use an app called Calendly, which allows me to kind of make slots available within my calendar. And then I send out a link to whoever wants to do the one-to-one -one sessions. That, allow, that puts the onus on the guys to kind of book time in my slot. Because it's easy to say, let's do one-to-one -one sessions. But, you know, we've all got families and we've all got other commitments. So it needs to be something that we can all commit to. We can all kind of agree to once that time is in the slot. So I use Calendly. Calendly I make some time slots available every week now on a Saturday and a Sunday. And people can just book in a 30-minute slot with me. And the beauty of the thing with the one-to-one -one slots is it's clearly it's one-to-one, -one, so it's tailored, right? So people can come with very specific questions. I've done stuff like CV help on one-to-one -one sessions. I've done general Salesforce help with one-to-one -one questions in the one-to-one -one sessions. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Oh, yeah. Now, have you noticed that daytime, afternoon, or evening sessions are popular? So the, ones, the question is, which slots work best, right? Daytime, evening, or uh, mornings? I, I've got a young family, so I'm quite restricted in when I can offer the one-to-one -one sessions. I offer them Saturday and Sunday mornings and early afternoon in the UK. Um, if, if I could, I'd offer them all day, but I don't think my wife would be too be happy with that. So, you know, it's hard for me to say which ones work best, because I haven't tried, like evenings or afternoons. But yeah, I might, I might actually give that a try, evening slots. That is too late. She knows now. She'll probably be watching this. <laughs> and how do you handle the registration? The registration? Yeah. Great question. So initially, I did registrations using a Google form. So I, using a Google form, and I linked it up to a Google sheet so that I could get, track all the participants and who's applied and stuff. And that's it, really. Once I had their emails, I'd contact them. Now that the program's open again, People will contact me just directly through my network, through other people that are on the program. They just email me and they say, Mahat, I want to get on. But it's something that I want to try and improve because if this is going to scale, I need to have a tighter process. I need to have um, something a little bit more automated. You know, maybe there's a tool for that called Salesforce. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Any questions, Richard? <laughs> Uh, come and see me. Oh, thank you. Do, 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 do. Yeah, thank you. Let me get a picture of you Oh. I'm late for your What? You coming up? Yeah, we're good. She wants us. She's posing us. Okay. So take a photo.